Well, Jesus has told us that he wants us to be the salt of the earth. But not only just salt, he wants us to be the light of the world. In Matthew 5, he said to his disciples then, and he is speaking to us today, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Light describes the influence that we as believers, as Christians, are to have in this world. We are to be influential in people's lives. And being the light of the world means that Christians are to live in such a way that their lives express the love of God to all people whose lives they touch. Again, just as Jesus did and when he said, you are the salt of the earth, you is emphasized. And where he, when he says, you are the light of the world, that you is emphasized. He emphasized it to his disciples back then. He is emphasizing it to us today. You, we, I, we are to be the light of the world. Now notice Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Not, you will become the light of the world. For you see, folks, it is the nature of a believer, a disciple of Jesus, to be light in the world. Any believer who fails to function as light is going against their own nature as God's new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 When we come to Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. We are a new creation. We're starting over again. We have new life in Jesus Christ. Believers' lights do not come from themselves. We reflect the light of Jesus. We cannot light up this world if we are not connected to Jesus. Now the light represents our good works. It, and these good works must be done in such a way, with such a right relationship with God, that all who see these good works cannot do anything but glorify God. We are to bring glory to God and we want others to bring glory to God and that's why we're called to be the light of the world and to uh, do that with our good works. Now Jesus uses two illustrations about the light here. The first one he used a city that is located on a hill. And most ancient cities were located on a hill or on an elevated area uh, because that made it easier for them to defend their city. And such cities were easily seen because their lights were visible on that hill. Their light could not be hidden. And like those cities, we want our lights, our loving service, and our good works to be seen not for our own glory, but for the glory of our Father in heaven. Now secondly, Jesus used a lamp to illustrate that our light must not be hidden. We're not to light it, light our lamp, turn our lamp on, and then cover it. But it is to remain out in the open where people can see it. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, For God is working in you, 
giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. For us to keep our lights shining and shining bright, we are to make sure that nothing comes between us and our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. If sin enters in, the power is cut off. So nothing must come between us and Him. Because He is our power source. And connected to Him, we can much better overcome the devil's temptations. In 1 Peter 5, we read, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and strong in your faith. We must be constantly alert because the evil one does not want us to serve God. He doesn't want us to serve others. He wants to put our light out. He actually wants us to be a witness for him. And if he is able to, uh, if, if we fall into the temptations that he lays before us, then he's been successful. The devil wants people to serve him and to do his evil work. And he is always tempting us to give in and have our lights hidden. So how do we stay connected to the power source? And how do we stay, how do we hold firmly to our faith? God's Word tells us in Hebrews 10.24, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good work. That sounds good, doesn't it? But you know what we have to do to do that? Yeah. If we're going to encourage one another, if we're going to motivate each other, we're commanded in Hebrews 10, 25, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another especially now that the day of His return is drawing near. Jesus' return draws nearer every day. We don't know when it's going to be. And so when He does return, we want our light shining. We don't want to be doing what the devil wants us to do. We want us to be doing what God wants us to do. If we want our lights to be bright, we must not neglect our meeting together in fellowship, to pray, to study the Bible, to worship, and yes, to serve together. In Ephesians, uh, before I get to Ephesians, there are, uh, there are many Christians today who think they do not need the church. But Jesus, Jesus established His church to be a place of fellowship where we can gather together to encourage one another and to motivate each other to be better lights, to be brighter.
Ephesians 4, we are given some important reasons for the church. These are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. Now these parts are the members of the church. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now when I read that, it brings up some questions. Are Christian soldiers, disciples, believers in Jesus, who are missing in action, being equipped to do the Lord's work and build up His church? Are they unified in their faith and knowledge of God's Son and spiritually mature in the Lord, measuring up to a full and complete standard of Christ? Are they speaking the truth in love and growing in every way to be more like Christ, who is the head of the church? Are they doing the special work that God set them apart to do? Are they helping others in the body of Christ become spiritually healthy and full of love? My answer is, I doubt it. I don't know how you feel about that, but I doubt it. It's not likely that they are the light of the world that Jesus has called all Christians to be. You know, if if someone who is not a Christian sees someone who is a Christian and they don't go to church and they think, well, hey, I don't have to go to church. I'm okay. God probably likes me just as well as they like them. Can't be a light. That's not being a light, folks. If a Christian is not going to church, and becoming equipped to make God's truth visible by serving and doing good deeds, their light is not bright enough to influence anyone. And I want you to guess who's telling them they don't have to go to church. Who is it? Who's telling them? The devil, certainly. You don't have to go to church. Now folks, a person does not have to go to church to be saved. But, once they are saved, they need the church. Jesus established the church to be a training center to equip Christians for the work of building up the body of Christ. Chapter 4 of Ephesians. Now, I'm not talking about building a church building, a physical building, but we're talking about reaching people for Jesus and building them up as His disciples. They are to become learners, just like we're learning. We continue to learn. And we're gonna, folks, we should be continuing to learn as long as we live. We ought to be trying for that perfection 
of Jesus as long as we live. But we will, we will not be perfect. Folks, we, we mess up. When we realize that we need to we need to quit messing up and turn back to to, to God. <clears throat> we will not be perfect until we reach heaven. But we are to strive for that perfection here on earth. Now, those of us who are always here must not become too proud because we're always here. For the Bible tells us in James chapter 1, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man or woman, child, youth he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he or she does. Folks, we are here to learn. We're here to learn. But we must apply what we learn to our lives. And here's why. If we learn, but we keep what we learn to ourselves, or if we only talk about what we've learned inside these church walls, then we may be influencing some lives here, but we're not being the light of the world out there if we're not going out there. Jesus said, you, including me, are the light of the world. Now Jesus knew that people aren't likely to come to his church to see the light. So he said, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now, we can't save people. Jesus is the only one who can do that. He's the only one who can save people from eternal death. But we have been given the responsibility to help people know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Are our lights shining for Jesus every day? Everywhere we go? Or do people see something in our lives that is in, inconsistent for a Christian? Do they see something in our lives that, that, that shouldn't be there? That deters them. That keeps them from wanting to know Christ. Our ultimate goal is stated in God's Word in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I believe it is, to glorify God. That's our ultimate goal. So in all that we do, we are to glorify God in our lives in such a way that it will lead others to glorify Him too. And for them to glorify Him, they have to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. I just noticed it's only 11.02, so, you know, we, we got a long, a long way to go here. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> a little boy was uh, sitting in church one Sunday morning, and he was just looking around the church, the sanctuary, and he saw pictures of people in the stained glass windows. 
He was sitting there by his mother in the pew, and uh, he kind of nudged her, and he asked her, Mom, who are those people in the window? And she answered, Those are the saints. The little boy thought about it for a while, and then he said, uh, I know who the saints are. They're the ones that let the light in. Folks, are we the saints that's letting the light in? Are our lights shining into people's lives? Or are our lights hidden? Let's pray.